Hi, Brian Beam for Red Giant. Here to talk to you today about Shadow, one of the plugins that make up Red Giant's new VFX suite. Let's go through some projects that will get you up and running with this easy to use and really pretty useful tool. So I have a basic composition set up here with the Shadow plugin applied to some text. So if we go into it, and we'll make sure that our layer controls are turned on, um, you can see that when you apply the plugin, um, it comes up with a, a very basic user interface. So we've got an access here that has the baseline of our shadow and another control that lets us adjust the direction and the length. So let's go ahead and set that up from scratch so that you can see what's going on. So I've got some text here and I'm going to go to Red Giant VFX and I'm going to apply shadow. And right away, it doesn't look like we have anything. So we can go to our axis setup and set it to bottom. And because our text has a border that is the size of the text, it automatically goes to the right direction. Let's take a, our access color and change it to something that's a little more viewable. And if we take this handle and pull it down, you can see that our shadow is already starting to be applied, but it's not quite tucked in where we want it to go. So if we grab this line here and start to pull up just a little bit, we can tuck it in. So if we zoom out and turn it off, you can see that now the shadow lines up right underneath the text. So let's take a look at another setup. I have this penguin here that I need to add a shadow to. And let's show you how to do this when you don't necessarily have the baseline in the place that you need it. So I will go ahead and if I set it to bottom, it, it doesn't look right. So if I take this handle and I just kind of tuck it in under the feet and bring this one down here. And we can see that our shadow is going off to the right. So if we take that handle now and bring that down, now we've got our shadow starting to be in the place that we need it to. And you can continue to move these handles around to get it where you need it to be for your shot. So one of the things that our penguin didn't have is uh, we wanted to soften up the shadow a little bit. So let's set that up again and show you how to use the shadow style section of the shadow plugin. So here we have a sort of homage to Sin City and we've got a really strong light coming from behind our actress. And so we need to cast a long shadow. Um, but we can see that the shadows are a little soft. And so we want to make sure that we can soften up the shadow to make it match. So. Let's go ahead and duplicate our Nancy and we'll delete the shadow and go ahead and apply shadow again. And we can go in and move the baseline and then bring our handle down and make it really long. Yeah, it's a big bright light from pretty far back. So it's going to cast a fairly long shadow and then under the shadow style controls, we've got opacity, which can, you know, fade out your shadow. We've got softness, which is sort of like a Gaussian blur. We can bring that up and you'll see that the shadow is going to start to blur out. And then we've got softness aspect, which is going to make the blur wider and wider and wider. If you pay attention to the shadow, as I bring the slider up, you're going to see it's almost like applying a Gaussian blur only in the horizontal direction. And the higher that goes, the wider the smear is down here. So let's bring that back down to one. And then we've got a couple of different softness types and they're just gonna have different looks and you, know, you can play around and figure out which one is gonna work best for you. They're all subtly different. And then we've got this fade start and fade length. So let's start with fade length. If we bring fade length down, you can see that as I get closer to zero, 
it's going to make the shadow end closer and closer to the beginning. So if I bring that all the way to the zero, you'll see that our shadow has completely disappeared. If we bring that up, you can sort of think of this like a, uh, a gradient. So if this is the beginning of the gradient, we're saying that by 40, like this would be pure white and totally transparent. So let's bring that up a little bit. Then we've got fade start. And what fade start does is it just sets the point in your shadow where that fade out starts to happen. So if we bring that up to six, you can see, pay attention right in here along these lines, you'll see the fade happen earlier and later. And we can kind of bring the shadow back. Really useful for blending your shadow into your composition. So let's take a look at shadow offset. You know, there's a lot of times where you might have a shadow that you need to cast against a wall or something like that. And you can do that with the shadow plugin as well. So let's go ahead and duplicate Nancy again. We'll turn off our original, apply shadow. And right away, you can see that it's not quite right. So what can we do to fix that? If we move it over to the right, that's not going to do it. But we've got this offset shadow underneath shadow style. And if we slide that to the right, you can see that we can start to cast it behind her. So again, there's a big bright light from the left. So maybe we want to scale up our shadow just a little bit and then offset that a little bit more. And then we can adjust our softness just a little bit. And very quickly, you can see that we were able to set that up and create something that looks really good. Lastly, let's take a look at bending shadows. You know, that's something that you often have to do if you have a character that's close to a wall and there's a light shining. You know, as that shadow casts from your actor, if it hits a wall, it's going to bend. Um, and that's something that's not easy to set up in normal After Effects. But the plugin makes it very easy to do that. So let's go ahead and set that up and show you how that works. So again, I'm going to apply shadow. And we'll adjust where we want that shadow to start and start to cast it. And you can see that without the bend, um, you know, it just doesn't look right. So let's set our angle right about there. And then if we go into shadow bend and we'll click this checkbox, you can see that it's going to bring up another set of controls. And we're going to be able to dial in where we want that shadow bend to start. So if you see that we bring it along the line that is allowing us to adjust the angle, you know, that's not quite right. So we need to adjust that height until it's right up where the bend happened. I mean, where the, where the wall meets up with the floor. And then we can adjust the height of this shadow and again we can adjust our softness just a little bit we've got some other controls inside a shadow bend we've got seam size and let's uh, change our seam color so you can see what's going on a little bit so we'll change that to red and if we zoom in This is the area where this blend is happening. We can make the, the seam darker. We've also got a couple of different seam styles. Just extra controls to help you blend all of that together. Speaking of blending, we also have some shadow blend settings that you can mess with. You know, we can adjust the gamma and the brightness. And then we can add some noise if we need to.
we can also add a little bit of softness after the noise. So that is a quick look at Shadow, part of the new VFX suite. There's so many cool tools that are built into this new suite, and I hope that you have a chance to take a look at all of them. Thanks so much for watching.